Okay, I think before integration becomes any more challenging, I think that we have to develop a couple of strategies for how we're going to find the integrals. Um, so let's try this. And this, this strategy is a strategy I think that is brilliant because it's very simple. Start with the original integral. Rewrite it in a way that's more friendly. It's hard for me to, in the same way if we were differentiating right now, and I had to use the chain rule. Sometimes it's difficult for me to see that in this. But if I rewrite it, and I think we can agree that, that here in green and this in orange, they are equivalents, aren't they? So if I rewrite it, it becomes much easier to integrate. And as I integrate it this way, I start to be able to see a little bit that how this is going to work out. And then I'm going to simplify it. I'm gonna, here's uh, the first example, and you can just take a look. I'm not going to uh, talk you through this one. Let's do the second one, though. And see if you can see this as we go along. I think what's going to be most helpful for you after we do this is if we prove if we prove this integration thing by by differentiating differentiating at the end and see if we get that thing back. So let's take a look at this. So here's the antiderivative of the square root of x with respect to x. Again, I have a hard time making much out of that, but I do know this. I feel pretty confident that x, the square root of x, is x to the one-half power dx. So now I'm going to start to integrate. And if you remember how this worked when, when, when this was a function and we are differentiating it, right? We took this, we took this number, we reduced it by one. Well, first, yeah, we reduced it by 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add that 1 back. So that gives us is equal to x to the 3 halves, right? And if you remember, this was the 3 halves that we had, right? If you think about the original function and we were differentiating it, first thing is that we took this and we multiplied it by what was it, whatever was in front, and that's how we got that number in front. So to get rid of that, to undo that multiplication, we have to divide by that. So it's 3 halves at the bottom. And if you want to know, well, we're going to talk about this in a second, but you know what this is going to do? It's going to force you to watch my video part two. So let's call this part one. Sorry about that. And then we'll go through this. Please remember, now this is in the form of a complex fraction. So what happens with complex fractions? You have A, B over C, D. And when you solve them, it becomes A, B times D, C. So what this comes up as it's reciprocal. So the truth of what we end up here with here is is right two thirds x to the three halves power and i think i was going to wait and do this but i think what i'm going to do here is just stop where we are just for a second and let's see if we can't kind of um reassure ourselves that everything is okay so what we said what we said was that that this was the derivative and if this was the derivative then what must the function have been and now what we said is this must have been the function if this was a derivative, this must have been the function. Of course, I should have added c for any constant value that was there. So I apologize for that. But let's try to redifferentiate this and see what happens. So let's take this and let's find out if it's not true that if this was the function, and I'm saying it is, that this was the function that we started with. Right? This was that function. And if I take the derivative of that function, darn well better get this thing back. Let's see if that's not true. So let's do that. So this is just basic differentiation, so we're going to take ddx of this plus ddx of this mess over here, right? And this is the power This is the power rule, so we'd multiply this, wouldn't we? And it would become 2 times 3 halves is 6 halves, so it would be 3 over 3. I hope you can see that. 3 halves times this is 6 halves halves, otherwise known as 3, and 3 over 3 is 1, isn't it? It would be x. Now, we'd reduce this. We'd decrement this by 1, so we'd minus 2 halves, wouldn't we? And we get x to the 1 half. And, of course, the derivative of any constant is 0. So, f prime at x was equal to the square root of x. Well, there it is. Sure, I love that example, but it works, doesn't it? Um, okay, so I, th I think we have a start. I'm going to do at least one more video on this and see if we can work our way through it. Keep working on this. Please, oh, there are those rules, and there are about 10 of them, kind of 10 basic rules 
of, of integration. And I gave them to you. I forget what page they're on, but you have to have those memorized. In the same way, when we memorized all those um, differentiation uh, formulas for trig functions, when, when it came time to apply them, it became a lot easier than trying to generate those things on the fly. So keep working.